So don't let big companies and interests decide what you're gonna eat and decide for you how you're gonna feed your family. Become informed, do the research. Hey there, this is an onion and it is not organic and that is okay. Today I wanna to talk about how there are certain foods that you do not need to worry about buying organic. First, we need to talk about an organization called EWG. No, you cannot have an onion. Basically, the organization investigates a variety of topics from food to skincare to sunscreen. I'm gonna put the onion down. And as you can imagine, an organization like this rubs a lot of people the wrong way. They have their own criticisms like fostering paranoia, uh, encouraging orthorexia. As far as I'm concerned, the list that they're most known for every year is a great resource for people who are trying to be more conscious about what they're buying and what they're putting into their bodies. I'm talking, of course, about the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. Each year, EWG releases its Shopper's Guide to Pesticides in Produce. Basically, the dirty dozen of the items that test the highest for pesticides, Clean 15, test the lowest. So if you're like us and you wanna eat organic foods, good for you. But know that you don't have to waste your money on certain foods. Don't forget, there can be an unfair connection between health and wealth. On average, organic food can price out at 7% or higher than conventional foods, which is why I love this list. It saves me money. So we'll talk about the things that you definitely wanna buy organic in a second, but first, let's start with the Clean 15. Now what, the general rule of thumb when it comes to what foods you should buy organic is, if you eat the outside of it, buy it organic, and if you eat the inside and you don't eat the skin, don't buy it organic, right? Makes sense. Well, yes and no. For example, we look at the Clean 15. Avocado tops the list. Makes sense, you don't eat the outside of an avocado. It's followed by sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, and frozen sweet peas. Very clear distinction, only the frozen sweet peas tested that way. Then later in the list you have honeydew melon, ew, and cantaloupe, double ew. Hey, makes sense, those pesticides must come off when we peel and remove the skin. But then things get a little different and you look at what else is on the list. You have eggplant, asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, kiwi, cauliflower, and mushrooms. As it turns out, each of these foods is unique in the way that it handles pesticides or in the farming practices. Take eggplant, for example. Eggplant has thick skin, which we can all learn from. That's cited as one of the reasons that it tests cleaner. Uh, same goes for kiwis, which if you're gonna eat the skin, you probably wanna buy organic. Cabbage, cabbage has tougher outer leaves that protect what's inside of it. So if you're gonna get ahead of cabbage, just take those outside leaves off and eat the inner leaves. Also, cabbage produces its own chemicals and its own compounds that deter insects. Same thing goes for broccoli. So these items don't have to be sprayed as often. When it comes to asparagus, a lot of the chemicals that are sprayed on, which isn't many, farmers don't have to do much with asparagus. I guess it's well known uh, for being pretty resilient, but any chemicals that do have to be sprayed on are usually on that woody part that's on the bottom of the asparagus that most normal people cut off before eating it, unless you have really strong teeth and stomachs. The one that took me off guard the most was mushrooms. And while they are not pesticide free, they made the cut on the Clean 15. I'm still not sure why. I don't know if it's something about the way they grow or about the way insects are attracted to them. So educate me if you know in the comments. But there you go, that's the Clean 15. You wanna have those memorized or in your phone, a, a, like a screenshot of it, a list of it, so that when you're grocery shopping and the organic asparagus is $3 for the bundle and the non-organic is a buck 80, you can save that $1.20. Now onto the dirty dozen. These are the items that we spring the extra cash for and we buy organic. In addition, by the way, to meat. A lot, you know, we try to buy all of our meat organic because we're eating essentially what they're eating. But the items on the dirty dozen, number one at the top of the list, and I think this is pretty consistent year in and year out, is strawberries. Then you have your leafy greens, spinach, kale, collard, mustard greens. We grow some of this right here in the backyard, but whenever I get it from the store, I get it organic. It's really not that much more when it comes to leafy greens. Nectarines, apples, you wanna make sure you're getting them organic. Same for grapes, cherries, peaches, pears, bell and hot peppers, celery, which is gross, 
and tomatoes. Tomatoes are notorious for testing high in pesticides. So make sure you're buying those organic or if you live in an environment that's conducive to it, grow them yourself. It takes a little bit to get them off the ground, but anyone who's done it before knows that once you start growing tomatoes, it does not stop and you end up with enough tomatoes for an, a full Italian restaurant, Billy Joel style. Now, bear in mind that the items on these lists, they're talking about pesticides and pesticide residue. They're not talking about other factors that go into the production of food, like farming practices and you know which ones are better farming practices for the farmer and for the environment and so on and so on and so on you will find if you try to start studying what you're eating that that is a rabbit hole that never ends there is no shortage of things to find out about the food that we eat and what we buy at the store but you do owe it to yourself seriously to do that research because you get one life you get one body you have to do it as right as you can and we talk about health and wealth on this channel what's the use in having one if you don't have the other. So don't let big companies and interests decide what you're going to eat and decide for you how you're going to feed your family. Become informed. Do the research. So make some power moves. Look out for your health and your wealth. Moves today that have impacts tomorrow. Love you guys. Having a lot of fun doing this. I'm going to go eat this onion and we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.